Well, you know, the first thing I'll tell them is this is new. Um, this is an opportunity that exists now uh, that really didn't exist, you know, a year or so ago. A patient typically would arrive at a situation where we felt like the medical therapy was just not going to work anymore. They've reached maximal medical therapy. And the only alternative really at that point, if we were going to seek a cure, was kind of a big deal. A general anesthetic, significant inconvenience, uh, extra risk associated with the anesthetic, increased cost, that kind of thing. And so I'll paint it to them as kind of a unique opportunity now that there's sort of a step in between. That step in between, you know, is something where they can literally drive themselves to the office, have the procedure done, drive themselves home after the procedure is done. Uh, in my experience, patients really experience very little discomfort with it. It is not as big as a procedure. It's really not resecting or removing anything. It's dilating it. So we'll also explain to them that I think it's, to some degree, a little bit more of a natural procedure um, because we're letting the outflow tracts that are supposed to be draining, uh, that are partially obstructed usually just by swelling, um, get dilated so that the area will drain the way it's supposed to. Um, I'll tell them it's possible it may not work. In other words, if it's a procedure that doesn't resolve in the, the infection, we'd still have to do the big procedure. Um, and it's very attractive to the patients when they know that they're a candidate for it. Okay. When I'm talking to the patient about the procedure, if they're showing me that they're concerned about having it done under a local, concerned about uh, a needle, uh, getting injections, a fear of pain during the procedure, I'll really relate to them that in my experience patients really don't, you know, aren't bothered much at all. Kind of like going to the dentist, but I would say a little easier is sometimes what I'll say. You know, that's because there's a sequence, and I'll explain to them, it's not that we just do local anesthetic or an injection. There's a topical anesthetic that's applied, which numbs the surface. Um, there's things that are done to decongest the nose so that there's a lot of room for us to work without bothering them. And once that topical anesthetic is going to work, and once the nose is decongested and easy to work in, then we put the injections of lidocaine in. A lot of times, I don't think the patient can really even feel that much at all. It's quite mild. And then I'll explain to them, you know, that basically during the procedure, usually there's a sensation of pressure. They may actually hear the sinus outflow tract dilating by hearing kind of a crunching sound. That's the little eggshell bone that's dilating. But I'll pre-warn them. I'll tell them it's going to happen. And uh, I think if they're prepared, um, really into a lot of them, I think general anesthetic, in my experience, is now uh, a little scarier for most people when, once you describe that. Um, they'd prefer to have the local anesthetic. Well, you have to be able to do a very good local block. I think you have to have a calm demeanor with the patient and be able to uh, get the local anesthetic in without really bothering them. If you can do that, it's a very atraumatic procedure for them. So practice with that. If, if uh, individual physicians had not a lot of experience doing procedures under local, they'd want to work on that. Other than that, I think once you've done a lot of these procedures in the operating room, and I have used the, the balloon in the operating room for a long time, you start getting a real feel for um, the placement of the balloon, the appropriate angle to be able to put the balloon in. And I usually am looking at the natural maxillary osteo, which is a little different than every person based upon the position of the uncinate process and the position of the bulla. So I can manually bend it right where I think it's going to be each time. What I've loved about the Express device so much from the very beginning, and which is very different than uh, the competitors in the marketplace, is tactile sensation. So you could imagine if your eyes are closed and your arm is extended and you walk towards the wall. When you reach the wall, you know you've reached it. That's because the tips of your fingers are an extension of you. Now, if you had a pencil on the end of your hand and you walk towards the wall and and your arm is extended, you'll actually feel when that pencil hits the wall because it has a direct tactile extension from the ends of your fingertips. So, look, surgeons in the operating room have been using sinus seekers and ball probes and sickle knives, metal instruments that they use to feel the skull base and feel the anatomy uh, for decades. And this instrument's an extension of what otolaryngologists have been doing for a long time already. Even better, it's malleable, so I can alter its position. 
uh, if it needs to be altered. You know, the nasofrontal recess is a little different from patient to patient. The maxillary osteo is a little different. So um, I love it for that reason. So we have a system down mirroring what you would do in an operating room where we have uh, one of the nurses in the office serve as a circulator and we have a technician that does the case with us. Uh, look, the future of otolaryngology, uh, probably the future of most uh, surgical subspecialties are going to be office-based procedures and I think most of us have started incorporating uh, implantations in the palate, turbinate reductions, lots of other procedures. So we've got a system down. Well, when you compare the other balloon product that's available in your product, um, and I have used both and been trained in both extensively, um, what, I've, what I disliked about the competitor's product was is that it is, uh, has no kinesthetic feel. So if I'm trying to, for example, advance it through an area, it'll bend and fold on itself. I actually consider that to be, uh, to some degree, risky. Uh, so, of course, there's concepts with wire guides, et cetera, that are supposed to guide those. But I trust my fingers. I trust my eyes. I trust the scope. I'd like to put things where I can see them, where I can feel them, and know that it's going to stay in that direction and not fold or bend on itself. Well, there's no question. Uh, one piece versus multiple pieces is always better. So when one compares the complexity of the, of the competitor product with multiple individual moving pieces that have to be worked together versus one product that you can literally see where you want to go, slide it in, slide the balloon, dilate and pull out. There's just no comparison in terms of uh, ease of use, quickness of use, and I, I, I consider personally a lot safer.